What up nerds? My name is Leslie. Welcome back to the Nerdy Narrative. Today I will be doing my weekly reading wrap up where I talk about all of my recent reads, what I've finished, what I'm still working on, and what I plan to get into next. Starting with the things that I finished or I am finished with, meaning DNFs. I'm going to go ahead and call The Rising Storm by Kevin Scott. That's part of the High Republic series of Star Wars. I'm going to go ahead and call that one a soft DNF. Chris, I think, is going to check the book back out again from the library and give it another college try. I am just not feeling the series. The prequel was really good, and then there was a novella that was really good. The rest of them have not been good enough to want me to continue the series. And because we bounce around different authors with the books in the series, I'm just not willing to invest the time in reading books hoping that the next author will write a good one. So unless something magical happens and Chris reads it and he's like, oh my god, you have to read this book. I don't expect I'm going to be revisiting the High Republic part of Star Wars. I've been trying to convince Chris to skip ahead to the original Thrawn trilogy, which I am very excited to read, so we'll see what happens there. Next on the list of completed reads, I do have here The Chaos Principle by Nathan Johnson. I have a physical copy now. The author was very kind to send this to me because I have some ideas of some videos that I want to make with it. So, spoiler alert, you're not done hearing about this book on the channel yet. There are several Several different elements about the chaos principle that I love individually so having them all together in one story was a lot of fun for me this is one that it looks small it is short but it's not one you can just fly through you're gonna want to think about some of the things that you're reading here some of the things that the characters are thinking about with their inner monologue things that are happening like for me one of the things about it that I love but also it scares the stuffing out of me and made this one have a horror story vibe was the fact that humanity was pretty much under the control of what they called annotated intelligence. Not artificial intelligence, annotated because it had the ability, the capacity to expand, enlighten itself, self-explanation. That scares me. I just feel like that's the direction that we're headed in. So that part of the story just played into that fear. But what this author did with that annotated intelligence that our main character Ansel Black nicknamed Annie. I saw Annie as intrusive. There was little to no privacy. She made humans extremely lazy and dependent. But it almost felt like she cared and there was something that Annie did at the end that brought tears to my eyes and I'm going, wait a minute. Why am I feeling compassion for this annotated intelligence named Annie? Like I just, another thing that I loved was being in the head of the character, Detective Ansel Black. I found Ansel's story fascinating. It was very philosophical. Ansel was on a personal quest for meaning, for finding truth through suffering because Annie had taken away human suffering. And because people didn't suffer, they never learned how to deal with it and accept it when they did experience it. For those of you wondering, do you ever find out how it is that Annie came to be in this position? Absolutely you do, but that is something I'm going to leave for you to discover on your own as readers. It's a great book. The next book on my completed reads list is Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. Bad Cree essentially in a nutshell is a coming of age story for the character Mackenzie. The book is marketed as a horror story. I didn't find very much horror in it. To me it was more of a mystery, suspense with a little bit of supernatural elements thrown in but I was never scared. The way the story opens up it is tinged with horror but that's pretty much all of the horror that we get and I thought the way that it started that this was going to be an amazing fast paced novel that was not the case. In fact the pacing is probably the biggest issue that I had with this story because we started out so fast and then we kind of ground to a halt. With this kind of story I do expect to suspend my belief a little bit when it comes to horror or supernatural elements. The mundane elements though I expect that part to make sense and there was just some things in the opening of the story that 
did not make sense. I know that seems small and nitpicky, but as someone who reads an awful lot, stuff like that stands out to me. I would find myself 10, 15 pages later still thinking in the back of my mind going, that doesn't make sense. That could have been done better. That could have been resolved. And that brings me out of the story and I'm not paying attention to those 10 to 15 pages so much because I'm fixated on that doesn't make sense how easy that was. It was very convenient. The things that I did like about the book, I loved Mackenzie's family. I would have loved more time with them because that's where a lot of the really great memorable quotes come from the different family members that have lessons in them. That's where we would get a lot of the information about Cree customs, beliefs, and traditions, which I also loved and I would have loved to have more of. Because I wanted more about what I had seen, I did do some research online and read a little bit more on my own. A lot of what I read about I cannot share because it is a huge spoiler for the story and once we got to the end the pacing did pick up but then we just sort of fall off with the ending. So as a result this one ended up being an okay read for me which was a little bit disappointing because I had high expectations for this one. Once I finished Bad Cree I went right into The Pain Eater by Kyle Muntz. I I'm not quite sure how to describe my experience with this book. I actually started it yesterday and I read 60% of it the first day. You're thinking, wow, you flew through 60% and you're confused about this book. Here's why. I love the premise, the concept of the idea of what's happening here. What I'm not enjoying is the author's writing style. It's very fragmented. There are so many grammatical errors. I am reading an arc that was provided by the author. So it is entirely possible. It is an uncorrected arc. That's generally how those roll, but there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. I'll read you an example of what I'm talking about. And you guys can tell me in the comments if I'm just being silly. His hair, when he pushed it aside to smoke was oily again. He hadn't taken a shower today and it was okay because he didn't smell, but he would have to take one tomorrow morning or his head would start to itch. His hair was almost as long as Haley's though hers reached her shoulders and sometimes time she had let him borrow her pants though they were a little too tight. How did we get from him talking about his hair and needing a shower to wearing his best friend's pants? Random, made no sense. Now a couple of chapters ago this character was talking about how they started wearing tighter pants, tighter clothing, but we just randomly jumped to it. Hence my confusion. There's a lot of jumping around like that. And then there's a lot of times where you have no idea even who is talking. So you might be thinking, Leslie, why are you still reading this book? Why haven't you DNF'd it? Because I'm hooked on wanting to know about first it was a cat, then it becomes this creature. I am hooked on what's going to happen here. While I do not like the writing style. It is not a style for me. I am wanting to know how it's going to end. I do not like any of the characters. I think they are silly. There's also some word choices that I do not care for the way that they are used in this book. I expect to either finish The Pain Eater today or DNF it. There could be something on the next page in that one that turns me completely all the way off. We'll have to find out next week. What am I going to read next? The top priority on January's TBR are my SPSFC reads, which are Echoes of Another Earth and Echo Genesis. I am going to buckle down and have both of those read by the time I check in with you next week, as well as another book that I forgot I'm in the middle of reading, which is the illustrated Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. When I first started this one, I'd forgotten how dark the tone was. Everybody was nitpicking and fighting, but I also forgot some of my most favorite moments of the story happened in this book, which is the formation of Dumbledore's army. And of course, when Fred and George Weasley cut loose on Hogwarts because of Professor Umbridge, so that has been a delight. I will likely have that one finished by the time I check in next week as well. If I manage to read all of those, I think the next one I'm going to start is Gods of the Black Gate by Joseph Sale. This is the second book in the series, Book of the Thrice Dead. This is a six part multiverse post-apocalyptic series. Last month, I read the first book in the series, Prince of the Wasteland, which is already out and available for purchase. That review is actually gonna go up on the channel next week. So stay tuned if you're interested to hear more about that to see if this is a series that is for you. That is where I'm going to leave you all today. I have got a lot of reading to do. Here we are January 10th, 11th, or 12th, whatever the date is. 
I am just now getting started on my January TBR. <laughs> ah, I'll just have to cancel everything this month and read. Oh darn. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my week of reading. Drop down in the comments below and tell me what all you read this past week. What you like, what you didn't like. Thank you all so much for being here today. Without you, this channel would not be where it is or what it is today. I am eternally grateful. I'll catch you guys in the next one.